A shalom, all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem and Double honors unto the apostles and the elders, a great millstone that rule well through the scriptures. Peace to the 144,000 and the rest of the hopeful elect. I'm the brother Kaya from GMS Indianapolis. The other two branches in Indiana is GMS Gary and GMS Bloomington. And uh, yeah, this is a series we got going on out here in uh, Indianapolis entitled for thy violence against thy brother Jacob, which we just go into the history of Esau Edom uh, continuously harassing our people. All right. Jacob name was changed to Israel. All right. And the various tribes make up who you know as the so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans today. All right. So real quick, I'm going to get a scripture. All right. Because there's this idea that Esau Edom, the so-called white man, had us in slavery, and then he freed us out of slavery, and everything else, uh, as it pertains to us getting ahead in society, getting a fair shake, uh, economy-wise, there's this notion that uh, it's our fault, all right, and everything's equal and everything's fair. Well, that's not true. This is Daniel 7 and 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Yeah, what race of people does that? All right. Who speaks against the Most High? The God of the Bible, that is. <laughs> and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Now, who are the saints of the Most High? The, the Israelites, so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. And when you go into the history, like uh, this series does, For Thy Violence Against Thy Brother Jacob, right? This particular series, he, it's, it's constant. All right. When you go into uh, 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 let me hold that real quick. When you go into uh, I think it's Ezekiel. Uh, oh, it's Amos. Yeah, Amos one eleven. Thus saith the Lord: For three transgressors of Edom, and for four I will not turn turn away the punishment thereof. Because he did pursue his brother with the sword. Who was it? Who? who? Us. Jacob. Jacob and Esau was brothers. Jacob became the patriarch of so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, the 12 tribes. And Esau became the patriarch of the Edomites. Germans, uh, the, the modern Germans, Russians, Belgium. Okay. Uh, uh, the people operating in England and, you know, the, the Dutch and all of the, 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 the current people. Right. Now, Israelites are scattered amongst all people, but predominantly the race you know them to be today, those are, they, they technically go back to Esau Edom, all right? Because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity, so he's, he, he's unmerciful, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. See, he kept his wrath forever, so he's constantly doing things. Now, he'll use the media to to undo and to, to manipulate and conceal. But there's always something that he's doing, whether it's individual or whether it's a, 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 the bulk of us in different regions. All right. You see what go on to Jake, what happened to Jake in, in different parts of the, of, the, of the world, different parts of the country. You see what happened over there in one of those towns a couple months back, uh, what was it, Mississippi? Where uh, they were just burying people in the back of the jail. Just burying them. Like, here it is. You got missing persons. People trying to find their family members. And they they just buried them. Some of them, the, they was killing. The police, that is. All right? So he kept, he keep it, kept his wrath forever. So it says, Daniel 7 and 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Right. So this man had the power. All right. And when he came on the scene uh, during the Renaissance period, which Renaissance means rebirth. And what was the, the rebirth of the rebirth of Edomite supremacy coming in the, um, the stead of the Roman Empire? So when they started getting the when they start working to get to the power and then they get to where they where they you know where they 
couple hundred years later because the Renaissance was around late 13, early 1400s. And, and it progressed on and they consolidating power. They taking, taking different people down. All right. And you fast forward. And now they can just speak against that. Everything change your culture. You know, they changing the culture of the, the people they come into contact with. They spread in a, 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 a white Jesus Christianity. And they telling you, they giving you the uh, spirituality. They giving you the, uh, the Bible and the vision and the, and the attitude and the sentiment of the scriptures according to how they feel. That's speaking great words against the most high. All right, so I want to look up uh, where out the saints. And they change in times and laws. Certain things that were staples, regardless of who ruling, is just certain things. Like I was talking to a guy today. He was like, well, we need water. We need air. So those are staples. All right. We, uh, we can all agree, regardless who ruling, we need that. Everyone needs that to survive, but he destroys that. <laughs> You know, everyone knows the the you know uh, the family unit is the is the is the the nucleus to a nation. He undoes and destroys that. You know. All right, so she'll wear out. Uh, bal bala bala ah. It says to harass constantly. So it's constantly harassing, and then they they got the movies. You look, go look up Mississippi Burn and, and, and Rosewood, and here it is, Jake, which Jake is an affectionate term for our, our people, Israel, so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. Here it is, minding our own good business, all right, and, and here they come, come burning down towns and burning down cities and, you know, just just pure hatred, okay? So let me pull this up, all right, now... This is the racial history of the grandfather clause. I'm going to read some of this article. All right. The term grandfathered has become part of the language. It's an easy way to describe individuals or companies who get to keep operating under an existing set of expectations when new rules are put in place. Now, after reading this article, I believe I, I misspoke on another video because I, I, I said the grandfather clause was applied to slavery. Where um, basically if your grandfather was a slave, then you will be a slave, which that's not how the, the clause works. Um, but who knows, it could have applied that way as far as uh, the first definition. Uh, the first thing I read, the term grandfather has become part of the language, is an easy way to describe individuals or companies who get to keep operating under an existing set of expectations when new rules are put in place. So when a new rule was put in place, uh, you know, slavery hereby abolished, except on the penalty of a crime. Well, Esau could have used grandfather clauses for that. And we must understand, too, slavery didn't end... Uh, immediately. Hell, we still in slavery now. We're just debt slaves and contractual slaves. All right. We just we just got a broader range. The plantation is much bigger. The world in captivity. All right. You need passports. You need <laughs> all type of license. All right. So the plantation is just bigger. But when when slavery was quote unquote ended, right, uh, Emancipation Proclamation, what what have you, it didn't end overnight, okay. It didn't just end. It, it took years for it to end. Hell, it was people still in slavery in the nineteen forties and fifties, even a little later than that. All right. Now it says, uh, but like I'm, I'm gonna jump down. But like so many things, the term grandfather used in this way has its roots in America's racial history. It entered the lexicon not just because it suggests something old, but because of a specific set of 19th century laws regulating voting. All right. 
The 15th Amendment, which prohibited racial discrimination in voting, was ratified by the states in 1870. If you know your history, you realize that Israelites were nevertheless kept from voting in large numbers in southern states for nearly a century more. All right. Various states created requirements, literacy tests and poll taxes and constitutional quizzes that were designed to keep Israelites from registering to vote. But many poor Southern whites were at risk of also losing their rights because they could not have met such expectations. The solution, a half dozen states passed laws that made men eligible to vote if they had been able to vote before Israelites were given the franchise, generally 1867, or if they were the lineal descendants of voters back then. This was called the Grandfather Clause. Most such laws were enacted in the early 1890s. See, see, they didn't, uh, it, uh, those laws they would, uh, enact would affect the poor whites, the, the poor Edomites. So then they was like, oh, okay, well, boom, the grandfather clause. Right. And so now, so now here it is. They, 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 they come up. Look, Isaiah, Isaiah 10. And one, warn to them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Yeah, they create they create unrighteous decrees, which was resulting in grievousness for us. They're prescribing grievousness for us. And all the while leading you on to believe that everything is all fair and equal and pull yourself up by the bootstraps, which, by the way, pull yourself up by the bootstraps is, is supposed to be a uh, um a euphemism because it's impossible to pull yourself up by the bootstraps. So how are we supposed to get ahead when this devil, this demon is, is constantly rigging the race? All right. So let me grab something else. Psalms. 94 and 20. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? Yeah, this kingdom is 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 is, a, is based off wickedness. It's a throne of iniquity, and it's not righteous. Which frameth mischief by a law. See how they construct uh, this w wickedness and deviousness through their legislation, and they they haven't stopped uh, doing it. They pass these bills and these laws. Why do you think they're a thousand pages, two thousand pages? Because somewhere on page 1,743, there's something that's infringing upon your rights, the little that you do get. On, an, on another page, 897-something else, and so on and so on and so forth. And it ain't written plainly the way I'm speaking in this lesson. No, it's written in legalese, all right? A regular dictionary won't be enough to help you to comprehend it. You'll need a special law dictionary, okay? Which, that's pure wickedness. All right? But protecting Edomites from restrictions meant to apply to, to Israelites was obviously another form of discrimination itself. Right. Let me see. Israelites typically lack the financial resources to file suit. The NAACP founded in 1909, which the NAACP was founded by uh, Edomites. That was founded by the enemy. See, Esau had a see. That's when his wisdom was 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 working more. See, his wisdom is failing him now. See, but at that time his wisdom was working. See, people didn't know the NAACP was a uh, was uh, which that's another for thy violence against thy brother Jacob episode potentially, because the NAACP, if I'm not mistaken, the original. The originator was a guy by the by the name of Mega Evers, but guess what happened? He was killed. You notice know, anybody who was killed or uh, destroyed in the media? 
nine and a half times out of ten, they was they was going the right they was going in a they wasn't selling out. I say that. I'm not gonna say they was going in the right direction because the right direction is towards Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. But they had their good sense working with them, and they had uh, affection for their people. All right, to to help them properly. Yeah, so the NAACP is basically a way for Esau Edom to, to, to monitor and restrict Jake under the guise of helping. Because even when you go to the NAACP, I don't know if it said now, but at one point it said uh, to get rid of the patriarchy. And the pa what's the patriarchy? Uh, uh, pater, P-A-T-R, that prefix mean male. Father, it means father, actually. Patriarch, patrician. All right, paternal. All right. So you see what happened to 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 um to um the the so-called black community when the father left the home. So that, so if with that being said, the NAACP <laughs> is helped is is basically. An institution to further the destruction of so-called Negroes. All right, the Latinos and Native Americans, because it said colored people, quote unquote. Anyway, it says uh, of the more than fifty-five thousand Israelites who were in Oklahoma in nineteen hundred, only fifty-seven came from states that had permitted Israelites to vote in eighteen sixty-seven. Okay. In 1915, the Supreme Court ruled unanimously in Gwen versus United States that grandfather clauses were unconstitutional. The court in those days upheld any number of segregationist laws. And even in Gwen specified that literacy tests were untethered. Literacy tests untethered from grandfather clauses were okay. And then you look, and then when you go down, who's gonna enforce these things? The clerk? So just because they was passing some of these things, it's still business as usual. You got uh, Jake, Jake will say, well, it's 2024, things different. Police brutality is still a thing. You got these guys, um, I forget what they call, but they basically check to see if police doing their job and check to see if they upholding the law and they know the law and they go back and forth. Man, they don't. They don't, uh, you can see in those exchanges, them, the law is not upheld and enforced, man. All right. Okay, let me see. Look, look, the decision had almost, let me see, did I read that? The justices were concerned that the grandfather clause was not only discriminatory, but a clear attempt by a state to nullify the federal constitution. It was so obvious an evasion that the Supreme Court could not have failed to declare it unconstitutional, the Washington Post wrote at the time. The decision had almost no effect, however, see? Because the people, as it trickled down to the, to the, to the governors, to the states, to the mayors, to the county clerk, and to the various different other people who hold those various offices to enforce it, they're not going, come on, they're not going to enforce it. That's why you had those other divisions, internal affairs and 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 and, and IRS and F, to, to audit um those people and to monitor them. It's just all one big farce, man, for real. It says the Oklahoma legislator met in special session to grandfather in the grandfather clause. The new law said those who had been registered in 1914 whites under the old system will automatically register to vote, while Israelites could only register between April 30th and May 11th, 1916, or forever be disenfranchised. That law stayed on the books until the Supreme Court ruling in 1939. So from, eight, from the 1860s to the 1939... And that's just on the books. Still, we still got to remember when was it? Just because something was passed, that don't mean it wasn't forced. All right. Look, in that era, most Israelites, 
voted Republican, the party of Abraham Lincoln. And it, um, ain't that ironic, right? How our people went from Republican to Democrat. And the Democrat basically, you see, uh, well, hey, you see what the Democratic Party has done. Right, you you see why our people was when they was Republican, so called. See what happened when they was Democrat. Democrats just destroyed the moral fabric of our people. See, we 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 have a close attachment to this book, and through dem and through Democratic policies, all they do is further separate us from this attachment we got with our power. That's why the scripture says what. Uh, the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduces him. Yeah, our people get seduced by these alternative lifestyles and uh, alternative contrary things to, uh, to the Bible, to things that we, things against our nature, you know. Uh, let me see. That's it. I think that was uh, uh, enough. Lord willing, it was edifying. Brakatai, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai. Yeah, so this was uh, another episode for thy violence against thy brother Jacob, the grandfather clause. Shalom.